everybody, my name is Jerry Johnston and I'm a librarian here at the Southeast Regional Library. And today I wanted to talk to you about the top 10 most influential generals of World War II. There's no particular order with these generals, I just thought they were very important to talk about. And let me know what you guys think. So the first general I want to talk about is General Yamamoto. He is a Japanese gen general, and he was also the mastermind behind the attack on Pearl Harbor. He graduated from the Naval Ca Japanese Imperial Naval Ca Ca Academy in 1904. He then attended Pearl Har He attended Harvard in 1919 to 1921. According to the legend, he's the one that said that he. I'm afraid we have woken the sleeping giant. But there's some speculations to, this, to if he actually said that or not. The next general I want to talk about is General Enric von Manstein. He was part of the German, the Nazi army, and he was a field marshal during World War II. He, after the defeat of the Nazi, uh, after the defeat of Nazi Germany, he was arrested by the British troops on August 23rd. 1945 after finishing his imprisonment in 1953 he joined the west german government as a military advisor as an historical investigator he wrote a book called the verlon siege depicting his own experiences and ideas that appeared during the 1930s and the 1940s so, the next general i want to talk about is general omar bradley he's one of the american generals Widely known for his polite, courteous nature, Omar Bradley was a notable American general of World War II, who significantly contributed in the Normandy landing as well as the Battle of the Bulge. From childhood, he had a great passion in baseball, books, shooting, and shooting, and in stream, mainstream media. Omar Bradley was characterized as a gentleman general who never demonstrated his power of authority authoritative abilities on officers and soldiers working under his leadership. So that's General Omar Bradley. The next general I would like to talk about is General Henry Arnold. Born to a prominent family in Pennsylvania, Henry Arnold is widely known for holding the ranks of General of, of the Army and later General of the Air Force. One of the military's pilots, were known as one of the first military pilots worldwide, Arnold, uh, till this date, is the only Air Force general to hold a five-star rank on the uniform. In his outstanding leadership, United States Air Force has achieved some of the most remarkable victories against the Axis powers. So, next general is, may I have a drum roll, please? Just kidding. Gregory Zuko, one of the most celebrated generals in the history of the Russian Empire, and he is a Soviet Union and Russian Federation. George Zirkov played a crucial role leading the Red Army during the conquering of Germany's capital of Berlin. He was born December 1, 1896 in a poor family and later went to Moscow to work as a cloak maker. Notable for depicting the never give up attitude, General Zirkov is still remembered for his stringencies, tough discipline, and detailed planning. The next general I want to talk about is General Bernard Montgomery. Best known for his nickname, Spartan General, Bernard Montgomery was an intimate officer of the British Army, who not only participated in World War I, but also played a significant role in World War II, ensuring the victory of the Eighth Army against the Axis in 1942. General Montgomery was the person who, on May 4, 1945, accepted surrender of the German forces in Lundberg, Heath. Winner of several prestigious awards, Montgomery took his last breath on March 24, 1946 at his home in Hampshire. Alright, we got to talk about my, actually, uh, my historical crush, and that is Douglas MacArthur. Douglas MacArthur was a notable warrior who played a striking role in the Pacific War during World War II, which further climaxed the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, thus compelling Japan to surrender. For his outstanding service in the Philippines, General MacArthur was awarded the Medal of Honor, apart from serving the Superintendent of the United States Military Academy at West Point. He also served as a military advisor to the Commonwealth Government 
of the Philippines. So, and I just, I love his attitude. I love that he really didn't want to leave the Philippines, even though um, Roosevelt ordered him to. I just felt like he was very much of a gentleman, um, gentleman general. He was very arrogant. I'm not gonna lie, he was one of the most arrogant uh, generals that uh, that participated in World War II, but I thought he was very important. So, the next general I would like to talk about is Dwight D. Eisenhower, and in such, so he was the general during World War II, and in central cornerstone of World War II, General Dwight D. Eisenhower was the supreme commander of the Allied forces in Europe. He played a major role in the Normandy invasion after the end of World War II. He was elected to the Supreme Commander of NATO and later became the 34th President of the United States. After living a, presti uh, living a prestigious and esteemed life, the prominent figure of the war in politics passed away in March 28, 1969. So that's Dwight D. Eisenhower. So the next general I would like to talk about, he's another... Um, He's another uh, German general, and that was Erwin Rommel. Respected by both his troops and his opponents for being generous officer, Erwin Rommel was a German field off marshal during World War II. He commanded the German forces during Norm the Normandy invasion and counted, uh, counted among the most experienced commanders of the desert warfare. General Rommel was properly known by his nickname Desert Fox, Throughout his service, he was never accused of any war crimes, and furthermore, he was against uh, killing and capturing civilians, so that's why I had to kind of put him in there. <laughs> and finally, we have to talk about General Patton as, my, as the last most influential general of World War II. Patton was also among the best generals of World War II. He's famed for his leadership as well as his victories he won from the Nazis. In 1944, Patton received the control of the U.S. 3rd military. He was able to give wings to his troops and the 3rd Army, advance further and capture more enemies and freed more lands in less time than any other military group in history. So that's why I mentioned Patton. So, um, I, so one of the things I also wanted to talk about during this program is some great books and movies that kind of surround the generals. One of the move, uh, books is called The Generals. Uh, I forgot the name of it, um, which talks about the uh, uh, Omar Bradley, uh, MacArthur, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and um, General Patton. A great movie that you can watch, especially with the kids, is called The Longest Day. It's in black and white, but I think that's very important for this time period because... Um, because it actually has some of the actual footage of the Normandy landing in the movie in, in the movie so I think that's really important for especially for kids who are in high school trying to give get them to relate to the uh, World War II so that's a great movie and final another great movie that deals with Yamamoto is um Tora 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 which is about the bombing of Pearl Harbor and not only does it talk about the United States, but it also talks about what Japan was thinking during that war. Along that lines, another great movie is the movie Midway that it w just came out in 19 2019. And that one, it talks about what happened after the Battle of Pearl Harbor. But those are some movies that I recommend that kind of reference the these generals. Oh, and one more I forgot, and that's the movie Patton, which clearly just talks about Patton. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.